Welcome to another how to paint furniture video. This time around, I'm going to be teaching you how to paint this finish. It was something that I just created based on just, you know, things that were going on around me. I just moved back to Florida. I kept seeing the blue, blue skies, the blue waters, all the blues everywhere. And it was kind of like, hmm, how can I take that and put it on a piece of furniture? So, ta-da! And it's called Grecian Sky. I decided to add a little bit of gold accenting in there, so we're actually gonna do this finish with some of our heavy metals, gilding paint, and I'll walk through all those steps. So if this is something you're interested in, stay tuned today on Wise Out Paint Party. So as always, the first step is just to walk through what you're gonna need. I like to share and show exactly what you're gonna need to start, along with the list in the description down below. That way you kind of have a visual, if you're brand new to Wise All, what everything looks like and what you're gonna need. So for this finish, I actually used my color, Refer This Gentleman, and mixed it with another color to get the base color for this piece. That's one of the things I loved about my color uh, it was just that mid-toned gray, blue, blue-gray color and allowed me to either darken it up or lighten it up. So when I was designing that color, I really wanted to have something that was that mid-tone so we could play and do some of the things that we're going to do. And today I have that color and I, I dubbed it RG Light, uh, just something fun I named it, but it's actually this color over here. So you're going to need Refurbished Gentleman in Wiseall Wise Chalk Synthesis Paint. You're also gonna need Limestone in Wiseall Chalk Synthesis Paint. And not only are you gonna need it to mix, but it's actually gonna be the additional steps within the finish itself. So you'll need those two to make three colors, ultimately, throughout the finish. So you're gonna need those two colors, and then you're going to need our Heavy Metal Gildings Paint and depending on what kind you want is totally up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and use Gold Dust. That's our newest for this particular finish. And I'm actually going to do hardware. Here's the sample board I'm gonna be using so you can see what, you know, here's the piece itself. So I'm gonna go back and recreate this finish, but I'm actually gonna use this sample board here to go ahead and show you guys how to do it. So with that, I'm going to put some hardware on. I'm going to show you how the hardware goes on and matches and goes with the finish itself and using our gold dust heavy metals gilding paint. And then our top coat for this is going to be our matte varnish. And then we're going to use some hemp oil furniture wax in black to give it all the yummy, you know, details in and around the cracks and crevices and hardware and all that kind of stuff. And then of course, you're going to need some blue shop towels. And for brushes, what I used, it's totally up to you what you choose to use, but for the main coat, I used my favorite brush, the Klingon S50. And then for the secondary coats, I used an F50 for the limestone and an R14 for the refurbished gentleman. And we're gonna walk through all of what that means and all the goodness that's gonna come from the layering of those colors in the video. And then I used an S30 for the heavy metals gilding paint, and then a Wiseau premium brush, one and a half inch flat for the waxing. And this video is going to also not only show you some layering of paint, but it's also going to use a specific technique called ragging. And that's what I use to get that, you know, kind of layered textured look, even though it's a flat surface. It's a really cool technique. I'm excited to share it in this video. All right, so step number one for our Grecian Sky finish is going to be painting your surface with the base coat. Now, as you can see, I have a sample door that I'm using to mimic the dresser that you saw in the intro. And what I've already done is I've already done the primer step. So there's gonna be some things I'm gonna skip through or over because we already have videos on those. That way this finish is just about the finish. So I'll put in the links down below and I'll probably tag it up here in the video I'll, on all things primer and prep and all the other good stuff to get you to this point. So once you've done all your proper prep, you got your primer down, 
the first step is to use your base color as your first step. So what we've created, as I talked about in the intro for the supplies, is I've created a new color using one for one with limestone and refurbished gentleman. And that gets you this really beautiful light blue gray color. And I put it in this, um, let's see, what kind of jar is this? This is a ball jar and it's a wide mouth. That way I can fit my brushes down into it. And I actually have another video specifically on how amazingly easy it is to mix Wiseau paints. And I actually did it to make this color. You know, I've named it RG Light just for fun. But if you're looking for RG Light or how to do it specifically, I'll put a video in the links down below as well for that. But for now, it's in my wide mouth jar so I can get my brush all the way down in there and we're just gonna paint this color on and it's amazing. Uh, it's definitely one of those things where when I created Refurbished Gentleman, I wanted a color that was not too dark and not too light where it would not allow me to be able to mix it and create something new with it. So I wanted that mid-tone, that mid-tone blue with just a little bit of hint of gray to ensure I can play with it. I love to mix colors. I love to blend colors and with Wiseau paint. Those are definitely things that are made very, very easy with the formula on how the chalk synthesis paint is created. So it's definitely one of those paints that you're gonna be able to do really incredible blended finishes or just like I've done here, if you're like, I want this color, but I want it a little lighter, which is pretty much what happened with mine, you can figure out what color you wanna to add to it. Now for this finish, the base coat is, is fairly simple. We're gonna get a, a, a base coat of this color, RG Light, we'll call it for the video. And we're not going to be too terribly specific about how I lay it down because we're doing this layered kind of clouded blue sky look. If we were just to flatten it out, I don't think it would have the same effect. So we're not gonna worry about brush strokes or any of that kind of stuff, which is always a fun video for me, right? You don't have to worry about flattening it out or having this brush strokeless finish. You can just kind of lay on the paint, which is something I enjoy. I enjoy the, the painted look of finishes I don't really always uh, like to flatten everything out because if you're painting, you know, if you look at a painting, not all paintings are just flat unless they're prints. You know, they actually have the brush strokes through. So to me, it just adds to the one of a kind flair of finishes that you do. So for this one, especially because we're doing a layered finish, adding the textured brush strokes throughout just added to the overall look to the finish. So we're just gonna get the base coat on and you can see how incredible the coverage is. Um, it's really crazy. I mean, I probably wouldn't really have to do a second coat other than the fact that I want to add more texture. So if you've watched any of my other videos, I'll go over it in this one too, but the first coat is just getting it on. And then the second coat is where we'll start to create a little bit more of the texture uh, in a more purposeful manner. So that's what we're gonna do. So this first coat is just getting this beautiful light blue gray color on. And then the second coat will be where we add a little, do a little bit more intentional brush stroking throughout to get the texture that I want you to have to do this finish. But look at that color, something else, right? Definitely could see, especially being on a cabinet door, I could see this as a, a kitchen cabinet color right here. All right, so that's all there's gonna to be to it. We're just gonna get this first coat on and I'm gonna walk through the second coat because really the second coat is where it's more a little bit more technique driven. First coat was just to show you, it's just that simple. You just paint it on with Wiseau paint and mixed colors, it turns out amazing. You don't have to worry about, you know, the colors not staying mixed. Um, best way to do it, again, is in a ball jar, a wide mouth jar when you're mixing because you can get the brush down in there and it just keeps it forever especially with this little uh, sealed top that they have really does an amazing job taking care of your paints so that's going to be it for now we're going to come back once it's dry I'm going to show you how to do that second coat of the RG light and then we're going to get to the fun the 
One is where we're going to start teaching you a little bit about ragging, and that's just a really cool technique that is usually used on walls. Some of the techniques I pull from all different kind of genres of painters, and this is another one that I pulled from to try and use as a finish on furniture, and it worked amazingly well. I was very happy with the finish of that piece. It actually sold really quick, so I'm hoping that someone else gives this a try and sees how, how it goes for you when you sell your piece. But that's going to be it for now, and next will be the second coat of RG Light. All right, so we're on to our second coat of what I have dubbed RG Light. And this is our base coat. And as you can see, it covered really, really well. It has that little hint of gray too, which really makes it cover, you know, uh, just amazingly well. You'll see if you try it. But for this, because our chalk synthesis paint self levels really well, like almost too well at times, and for this finish, I want to add some brush strokes to it. We have to go through a little bit of, you know, something different for the second coat. You're not just going to paint it on and walk away and let it sup, self level. We're going to have to add those brush strokes to it. And ultimately, at the end of the day, for this Grecian sky finish, it just adds to the texture. Like if you were looking at clouds, clouds have a lot of texture, but on a flat surface, you're not going to want to feel it. You're just want to see it. So that's why I was kind of get with the way I did this finish. So I'm gonna actually zoom in and talk through how I add brush strokes to our chalk synthesis paint. Because again, self levels really well. So there's a couple rules of thumb, things that you can do, technique driven things to allow you to add those brush strokes and ensure that they stay there all the way through the drying process. Because a lot of times you could paint this stuff on Think it's gonna stay just brush stroked and pretty and you're gonna come back and it's gonna be flat as can be which is not a bad thing for the most part so for this we're just gonna like i said zoom in kind of show you what i do to try to ensure i keep some of those brush strokes the way i want them okay so i got you all zoomed in i got my klingon s50 which was in a ziploc bag at room temperature to keep it the brush moist so i can just Pull it back out and use it again because I knew I had to do a second coat. Now, normally on a second coat of paint, if you've already watched my how to get a brush stroke free finish, I would ensure I got a mister bottle because what's going to happen is the tension between the chalk finish and the paint is going to pull and tug and to get it perfectly flat the way you'd want to, you're going to use a mister and ensure there's good, you know, smooth application of the paint. Well, for this particular finish, I'm going to want to keep brush strokes. And you can kind of see some, but that's only the gray from the primer showing through. It's not necessarily texture driven. So you're not actually seeing, like, I can't feel any brush strokes. I don't want to really feel them necessarily, but I do. It's like a give and take thing when you're adding brush strokes. You don't want it to feel textured like if I was using a salt wash but I don't want it to be flat either for this finish. So I'm gonna forego using my mister. So I'm gonna put that off to the side. I'm not gonna mist my brush and I'm gonna go directly into my jar and I have my wide mouth ball jar. Now, what you can do if you want to ensure your paint is a little thicker is you can leave your jar open for a little bit before you go paint. And, and the moisture will escape and it will thicken up a little bit. Now, it's not necessarily what I like to do because a lot of times the top of the paint will dry on you and the bottom will still be, you know, still have the moisture to it. So that's one of the tricks some people use. We'll leave it out to let it thicken up a little bit. Not necessarily what I would do. What I would do, again, is come right out of the jar paint this stuff on and I'm going to paint it a little thicker than I would have the first coat. So the first coat was really to get complete coverage on every little spot, every little nook and cranny. And the second coat for this particular way that I'm adding brush strokes, I'm going to add more paint than if I was doing the second coat with like a brush stroke free style finish. There's going to be just a little bit more paint I'm going to add to it. And with that friction and that tension, from the first coat, painting on the second coat and not using my mister, it's gonna generally want to have brush strokes in it. Now you see those brush strokes now, but what's gonna happen is this stuff self levels amazingly well. So it's gonna wanna flatten out on you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a 
you know, a little bit more paint than we would if we were just doing a nice brush stroke pre-finish. We're gonna leave that in that section and we're gonna move on to the next section. So I've not finished this section up yet. So basically what I'm allowing it to do is giving it a little bit of time to start to dry. And when it starts to dry, it's gonna thicken up. Just like if we were to have left our paint out with the top open, it'll start to thicken up as well. But I'm just wanting the paint that I'm actually gonna be using to thicken up, which is why I do it this way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it on. I'm gonna get it all over. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna hit every area a second time after it's already started to dry. Like the cardinal sin of painting when you want a you know brush stroke pre finish you paint it on and walk away you don't mess with it right but if you want to add brush strokes you want to give it a little bit of cool texture to it you're going to want to go back over top of it as it's drying and make those brush strokes stay there because again and i'll say this over and over because it's really amazing how well this stuff self levels and if, if you you just paint it on a walk away. It will not be, it will not have brush strokes in it. It's gonna be flat for the most part, depending on, you know, obviously your paint application. If you put too much paint on, no matter what, it's not not gonna be flat, but it's so, okay. So I got it on everywhere, I think. Probably not that front part that I can't see right now, but I've got it all on, right? So now I'm gonna come back to the first area. So I'm gonna go back over everything in the same order that I did it. So I started in the middle, and I work my way out. And now I'm just gonna start adding, brushing on some of those brush strokes. And you already see this side starting to want to dry already because it's a little warm in here right now. So it's actually gonna work out good. So for this finish, this Grecian sky finish, it's gonna look like clouds, right? So with it having to look like clouds, we're gonna be doing, well, I'm not gonna give away what I'm gonna do next, you'll see. The next layers of what I'm going to do are complemented by having this tear, uh, layered, brushed on look. So we'll get to the next step and I'll explain more into my reasoning when we get there. So we're just going to, you know, drag our brush, tab here, tab there, and just continue kind of working it. Again, that sin that I tell people not to do when they're wanting a brush stroke refinish is what we are trying to do with this particular Grecian sky finish. We're trying to add brush strokes. So we're gonna, while it's drying, continue to play. And you can jab here, or there. Ultimately, you wanna just make sure the paint is flat and you're not doing anything like a, a salt wash style, um, really, really textured spot anywhere. You're not wanting that because you're still wanting it to be flat, but you're wanting it to show all the brushstroke goodness. And this is all there's gonna be to it. And then again, you're gonna keep working it, overworking it, as I would say, and ensuring that those brush strokes stay in there everywhere I want it to. Something like that. And right now, it, you're not really sure where it's gonna end up because some areas might flatten out, some areas might stay a little textured. That's what you want. That kind of perfectly imperfect look because if you're looking at a sky of clouds, none of it is done perfectly. It's all kind of like, you know, its own natural way. So anyways, I just wanted to zoom in and show you just my method in adding brush strokes to a piece for the finishes because that's the way I did it for this particular finish. And I know there's lots of different ways out there to add texture, but this is just a good way using our chalk synthesis paint that doesn't want to texture, it wants to flatten to be able to get that same effect. And next up, we get into a little bit of the fun with the ragging technique I talked about at the beginning. All right, so here we have our dampened base coat. So what I've done is I've taken my mister, I missed it over it, made sure it's good and dampened. And then this is my wash color of limestone in water. And what I will start doing is taking my, I had an F40 for this because all my F50s are dirty right now. So I'm going to grab my F40 and I'm going to dip it into this water mixture, right? 
and we're going to just brush this on. And depending on how how much of the paint color you want to show, you might need to dip your paint. So I'm going to dip the tip of my paintbrush. I just got a little bit, you see there, and we're going to help assist that color wash. But we're going to start with the color wash first. So I'm going to dip with the color wash. And then if I feel like I need to add more paint, I'll add more paint. That way you can ensure it's wet by starting with the wash first, because if you try to paint right on, paint over paint, it's not gonna be able to move around the way you want it to. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean here in a second. And you're gonna wanna hustle through this. You know, I got a little bit more paint because it will want to dry, obviously, and be harder to move around on it. So we're gonna get it all on. And this is about the size of the area you're gonna wanna do for this technique. So I'm going a little bit on the fast side here. And we're just going to get it on. So we're going to cover it up and you can kind of see my brush strokes from below. And another reason why we did that, I'm going to get just a little bit more paint and do this side to try to even it out. Okay, so it's wet all over. It's staying wet. Thankfully, the open time is long enough. You can brush it on there. Okay, now you could leave it like that or you can wipe off depending on what kind of color wash technique you're using, but I'm using a ragging technique. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have our crumpled up shop towel and I'm just gonna dab just like this. Look at that, how cool is that? So basically what it's doing is it giving you that kind of texture that the shop towel is in a kind of subtractive method. It's pulling the paint off, right? And as it gets a little bit like thick with paint, you just kind of roll it, wrap it around and you just keep going. And this is all you're going to do. And it gives it just another layer of depth and dimension to the paint. That's usually what a color wash will do, regardless of how you apply it. If you're just brushing it on and brushing it off or brushing it on and wiping it off. Like if I was just a white, you would still see some of that limestone left behind down in my brush strokes from below. This way, we're giving it a, almost like a patterned look. And for me, for this, particular finish that I wanted, it's going to be called Grecian Sky. So it really lends itself to a cloudy sky look. And if as long as you're, you wet the surface first, you have a wash that you brush on. And then if you need to add a little paint like I did, add a little paint, it will stay wet long enough for you to do about the size, maybe a little bit bigger and still be able to manipulate the paint in which every way you want to. And for this, like I said, we're using this ragging technique and we're just kind of dabbing on and off, dabbing on and off all the way around. And there's really no right or wrong way. Ultimately, you're trying to get it as even as possible. That'd probably be the only thing I'd say, you know, you want to take a step back and take a look. I think I actually put all the drawers on the piece that was the example and did this at the same time. That way I didn't do drawers individually. And then one drawer had more of the limestone than another. It was all very evenly done throughout. But look how cool that is, right? So now you're seeing the brush strokes from below because where I'm dabbing, I'm not digging down. So the brush strokes are showing through, the layering is starting, right? So this is our basically our highlight layer because we're gonna come back and do the same exact technique with Refurbished Gentleman next. So we started with a mixture of Refurbished Gentleman and Limestone. We went back to the Limestone for the highlight first, and then next will be Refurbished Gentleman for the low lights, so the darkened areas. And as you can see, as you put paint on, you can put, you can, you're not subtracting anymore, you're putting it back on so you can dab some in spots where you feel like, oh, well, I pulled too much off. So you can go over here and kind of dab it. And then if you don't want to do that, if you want to go back to being subtractive, then you go to a spot where there's no paint and you start dabbing some more. And again, the paint will stay open long, long enough for you to be able to do a size, an area about this size, as long as you're not like, you know, 
taking too much time and I definitely wouldn't have a fan anywhere near this because it'll want to dry on you if you do that. I've turned all the fans off in here. So look at that. Very cool, right? So this is just another really cool way to do a wash color over another color, but not just have it be straight a straight flat look. It actually has some textured look to it. And again, why you'd want those brush strokes from below to be present because it just gives it even more texture. And as I'm talking, I'm looking to see if I got this the way I want it to. And that's gonna take some time to dry. You're definitely gonna wanna wait because I, I wet it first and then I used the color wash. And that whole time this paint has been wet. And another side note to this, Anytime you're doing a wash, you want to give your base coat at least a day or two to dry and let some of the moisture escape out of it. That way you're not reactivating the paint with as much water as you might use for a color wash. You give it a day or two for the moisture to start to evaporate and you're not going to have any problems where the wash is going to peel off your base coat because you just did it an hour or two ago. Definitely do it. I definitely would wait at least a day. I waited two days for this. All right, well, I think that looks good from what I can see from this side of the light. Um, again, we're gonna come back, we're gonna do the same exact thing, except for with the refurbished gentleman for the low lights. And you can see I'm already starting to turn limestone. So I'm not gonna go through the whole mixing method or anything like that with you guys with that. It'll be the same thing, put it in a bowl, mix it up, have the can handy so you can dip it in and I'll go through all of it exactly how we apply it to give it more of that shadowing, shading look that you see in the final piece. All right, so here we are onto our next layer of wash color with Refurbished Gentleman. And again, this is going to be kind of the contrasting color to deepen the recessed areas and just kind of blend it all together even that much more. So we used the mix of the two colors for the base, the lighter of the two colors for the first coat, and then the darker of the two color, colors to finish it off. And as you can see, look at how pretty that is. It's this really cloudy sky looking kind of, I don't know what you want to call it. I just love the way that uh, ragging technique just leaves it perfectly imperfect. Is one of my favorite things to say. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use just refurbished gentlemen and just in specific areas. So what I'm going to try to do is these recessed areas all in and around here and in these cracks or crevices or whatever you want to call them around the outside, we're going to do the same method. I'm going to use my Klingon R14 to narrow down the surface because I don't want to do it all in the middle. I want to go ahead and leave the middle as much like it is as possible. So the very first thing, I'm gonna make sure it's misted. Okay, we're just gonna miss the areas I'm gonna hit, like so, okay? And then we're gonna dip into our, so I have it again, mixed water and refurbished gentleman, a little bit less this time around because obviously, you know, it's a smaller area, so we're not gonna really need it as much, okay? So we're gonna brush this in, like so. And we'll do the same thing where we grab just a little bit of paint as well to help the process along. So I'm gonna dip just a little bit of paint in my can over here, so just a teeny tiny little bit. I'm gonna brush that in and help us get that look that we're going for in that area, okay? So we're just gonna do this inside area first. And this is where you might wanna just do it localized and dip into the wet a little bit to loosen up that paint. You're going to do it more localized because this is more of the shading technique that we're going to be doing with this. So we want to just kind of hit it more specifically than we're, we were doing all over with the previous color. Okay, so we got that on and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to kind of use that ragging technique to blend out that refurbished gentleman and deepen those recessed areas. Okay. And as you go, if you feel like, hey, it needs to be a little bit more wet, you can spritz a little water on there just to help blend it out. 
because we're going a little bit darker. So it's a little bit more noticeable if you got more paint than water. So you want to just give it a little bit, to help it so you can blend it out really well. So this is what we're going to do for the recessed areas. And we're going to have it go darker to lighter back out to where it was with just the limestone. And this is what I did to give that kind of faded light to dark look that was on the piece. Let's see here, we're gonna dip our brush a little bit, help the side along a little. And again, you're probably gonna to wanna to do it in a smaller area. Like I probably would have only done about half of this normally, like if it was just me doing it. I'm gonna to try to do this a little bit quicker in the video. All right. And you just continue and the same thing will apply. You can flip your rag around, it gets a little bit too full and pull some off. And while it's wet is where you wanna really get it exactly how you want it. And doing the ragging technique allows it to blend quite a bit better. But the other thing I didn't mention in the first video was simply that if you don't like any of this, like you put too much or too little, it's just as easy as going back over it with the previous coat. So like that first coat I did with limestone, that ragging technique, if I put too much limestone I could come back with our mixture, our RG light, and do the same ragging technique, right? And just go back over top of it and bring it bring it back a little bit. Because ultimately we're just layering the paint to give a, the desired result that we want, right? So you can see I'm just dabbing a little on, brushing a little on, trying to give a nice rounded shaded look. I'm probably not getting the front as well as I am the, this side because the way the light is, but we kind of get the idea. We're brushing it on and we're taking our wet rag and we're just dabbing it off until it blends just so. And we're getting those darkened areas even darker. So once we get it to this point where we've done a more broad ranging additive of the refurbished gentleman, then we might wanna get a little bit of paint, just a little bit and go right down into the cracks a little bit deeper right? And then go right back with the, the rag. And that way we're really darkening the inner recessed areas and allowing it to blend further from the dark to the light on the outside. So something like that. Okay. Now I'm going to get a little bit more. I'm going to do one more side for you. So we're going to do over here, right? So I'm going to brush this in just that those cracks that are down in there, right? Jab it into the corner and then immediately come right back to it with my rag, my wet rag. And that way I'm just getting the top areas, leaving the dark down on the inside. That way we're getting the best blended dark to light look that we can. I'm gonna do it over here to you just to see what we get. Like so. And then once, once you start doing just a little bit of paint only on this already kind of dampened surface, you don't definitely don't want to do a large area, just a small area, because it'll want to dry much, much quicker if you're just doing paint only than if you were to do the, the wash part. So then you just kind of play. So I'm going to add a little bit more wash to this side, because I think it didn't blend out well enough. So just come back over it like so. Switch my rag around. This is starting to show too much of the refurbished gentleman only. And you just play and you just blend and you just do it until you see the blending that you want. But for this finish, we're just doing those inner workings, the inner recessed areas to darken it up. So we have dark up to light and then same thing around the outside. So I would do, you know, the dark areas in here like this, a little bit more with the, just the paint only, and then dab, trying to keep this top area as light as possible. But how cool is that? Pretty cool, right? So this ragging technique, I mean, is a little bit of work, not gonna lie to you. It, you know, it takes a little patience, but it's ultimately at the end of the day, it's, it's just, you know, it's art. I mean, you're deciding how you want to do it. There's no really exact 
you must do it this way kind of thing. I mean, I'm giving you the general idea of the technique, but at the end of the day, it's what do you think you want it to look like it when it's all done. For this finish, we went mid-tone, light, then dark to ensure the dark was the final step. That way, the recessed area's got that darker color look to it at the end. That's why I did it in that order. And that's it. That's what we're gonna do for the color. Next up, we're gonna get in and add the heavy metals gilding paint. And as you'll see in the piece, there was some really unique like beading on the doors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, how, pretend like this area in here is that beading and I'm gonna show you what I did, how I painted just that area alone, and then we'll go on to the next steps. But I wanted to add that in here even though it was just a sample board, just to show you. And then I already have a video on here on how to do hardware. So I'll, you guys can check that out. But I am gonna add the hardware onto my hole I created here and do the whole effect all in one so you can really see like how it's done in person, live in person, and then you'll see the example piece that I used as well so you can kind of see what the whole piece looks like. But that is really cool. <laughs> Hadn't done this in a while. That piece I did was a few months back. And this is still just a really neat finish how it comes out. So anyways, that's it for now. We're gonna come back with heavy metals gilding paint and show you how that step works. All right, so we've completed all of our ragging technique to add two color wash layers of paint. And this is what we came up with, with a little bit of tape on there right now, because what I wanted to do was show you how I added the heavy metals gilding paint details to the piece that you actually see in the intro on the sample board so you can kind of see. So let me step to the side and I'll put a little screenshot up here. So this is the front door area had the little like fake nail heads and I decided to complement the hardware color with the heavy metals with those little fake nail heads. So what I want to do is just show you how I got this with the nail heads all the way around and how I made it really, really easy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to show you exactly what I did, how I taped this thing, and then we're actually going to paint it up. Okay, so we got y'all set up close so you can see what I did here. So in that detailed area where those fake nail heads were, I knew I wanted that to be the goal, to go ahead and match the hardware. So as an example, hardware is gonna go on here like this. And I'm gonna take this screw off here. Put this on here like this, right? and you have the gold with the blues, you know, circling it, and then some gold on the inside. And I just thought that would look cool, right? So how the heck did I do that without having to just like painstakingly hand detail it in there? So what I did was I took some blue tape and I just taped all in and around the edge so as you can see, it wraps over the edge, but not all the way down to this next area. And that's the same thing I did on that piece. I went ahead and taped just around the edge. So the edge is still gonna be blue. So we're not taking away from the color along the, lar the, the flat area. We're just doing the inside. And then I did the tape, shoved the, the tape down to the, the, down into that recessed area and then flattened it out and went all the way around with it. And this makes it really, really, really easy, whether it's a detailed area or you're doing something like this where you just want to complement the gold that's going all over or somewhere else and just have like this little strip. This is the easiest way, just taping it off, having that area separated so you're not having to try to hand detail the paint on. And once you pull the tape off, it's going to be a nice, clean, crisp line for you and you know, that's the way to go. So what today, what we're today I'm gonna to be using is our newest heavy metal, and this is gold dust. And what I used on this guy here, you can see how beautiful that is and how nice it's gonna look with that paint job we have going on there. So first things first, pop this top open, and we're gonna stir it up real good. Make sure it's all stirred up before we paint it on. I have my Klingon S30 today. Let's do the painting. 
I got a little plastic knife and you just want to stir it up real good. This paint for the most part, look at how beautiful that is. Um, stays pretty well stirred together, but I always just stir it anyway, just to make sure. Okay, so we're just gonna take our S30 and you don't need a lot of this paint either. I'm just gonna drag it along here. And for a metallic paint, this stuff covers really well. A lot of metallic paints that are out there, they're pretty well see-through almost, and it take like layer after layer after layer after layer, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. And so I was glad that we came out with a, a metallic paint, and we're able to add in some really cool color, metallic colors for us to use, to use on hardware or accenting like I'm doing here throughout a piece. So this will take two coats. The first coat will be, be just like what you would do with our chalk synthesis paint. It would be the first coat would be just kind of getting it on and getting almost complete coverage. And then the second coat will be where you get that nice complete coverage. And with metallic paints, you could, you know, depending on how you want to do it, you can make it look smooth because this also self levels really, really well. So I could get it on and then flatten it out, or I could do, you know, kind of a stipple kind of look to give it more of that metallic look, or I could, you know, kind of cross hatch it and be like almost like those old scratches within the metal kind of look. That's usually what I do. I really enjoy that look anytime I'm adding metallic paints to something. This is all I did. I just wanted to go over this one little step in case people were wondering if I actually hand detailed all those nail heads on that piece or if I you know, had some little trick or tip to share if you had something like that you were wanting to do, and I did. So definitely did not try to hand detail the whole thing. That just would be so much, it'd be a crazy amount of work to try to do it so perfectly like that. So I decided to tape it all off. So, but I'm not gonna do the second coat of this because it's pretty much gonna be the same step. We're just gonna paint it on, and sure you finish it off however you want to. If you want it flat, just lay a nice clean brush stroke and just go completely across and leave it alone. It'll flatten out really well. If you want some stippling, like a hammered metal effect, you could do it like that and leave it. It's still gonna flatten a lot, but it'll have some of the effect. And then if you do the cross hatching, the way the metallics fall, it'll have some different kind of effects of the way it shimmers, which is pretty cool, which is why I like to do the cross hatching method. All right, pretty cool, right? So that's what we're gonna have. And I'm not gonna show you guys how I paint the hardware because I already have a video on here for um, painting hardware with our heavy metals gilding paint, which I had already mentioned, but I'll have a link in the description down below for anyone who's looking for that video to help you. So you can see we did all the paints first, and that's one of the good things about having a gilding paint and not a wax, because now that I've done this as a paint and not a wax, I can do whatever I want over top of it which is what's gonna happen. There's gonna be a couple of things that happen over top of this paint. And if it was a wax, just a gilling wax, you would have to stop. You wouldn't be able to do anything else over top of it. So that's another really great reason to uh, go ahead and give these a try and not use a gilding wax because you're kind of stuck as that being the last step and you really can't do anything else with it after that. So that's another thing I really enjoyed about us having this added to our YZL paint line is now I'm able to do some extra steps over top of the gilding paint to continue to add to my finishes, which especially for this one, there's two more steps to go to make sure this finishes off the way I want it to. So anyways, that's gonna be it for now. We're gonna come back with the top coat, which we're gonna do over everything. So I'm gonna go peel this tape back after I do the second coat of the paint, the heavy metals gilding paint, and show you what this whole thing looks like. Okay, so we're on to our next step, 
and that's going to be top coating. So as you can see, I pulled off the tape and you can see our beautiful gold dust stripe all the way around. And as it was in the piece that had that, you know, faux nail head, you can kind of see where this would come in handy, that little technique on how to isolate the area that you want to paint and just be able to paint it on without having to get so incredibly detailed with trying, you know, to paint freehand, I guess is the point to that. So, but you can also see how cool an effect it gives, just an extra little something of gold that went with the hardware that'll come on next. And then with the top of that piece in particular, I happen to stain a golden oak like color, which made it all work really well together. So what we're doing now is we're on a top coat. And for this finish, I'm gonna use a varnish and I'm gonna use matte. And that's the cool thing again about using our gilding paint instead of a gilding wax is I can top coat it with whatever I want. So if I wanted to go gloss, I could go gloss. If I wanted to keep it matte, which I'm going to do, I can bring down the sheen a little bit that it, the gilding paint has. So that's one of the cool things about using a gilding paint instead of a wax is you can do whatever you want to over top of it. And it doesn't have to be the last final, that's it. It's all you can do, step. So. I've got my Klingon F50 and I have stirred my matte varnished. You want to stir it really well. Make sure you don't shake it. You don't want to get a bunch of bubbles in it. And then we're going to do a little dip. You don't need a lot. And we're just going to paint this on. And for this finish, because there's so much texture and layers from below, from all the way from the very beginning to where we're at now, you don't even really need to worry about brush strokes if there's any that are left in the varnish. So you can kind of add to the brush stroke finish with your top coat by brushing it on in different directions, doing the cross hatching deal. Um, just know that you don't want to overwork it too much because it'll dry really fast. And as you're brushing it in, it will dry so you want to do whatever cross hatching you're going to do in those first few strokes and then kind of leave it alone. That way you're not putting too much texture to it. And that's all we're going to do. We're just going to do a coat of this over everything. And that's the thing, using the gilding paint, I'm able to keep the same top coated finish look as the paint instead of the, the Gilding paint being a little bit more shiny and um, I guess shiny is probably the best word, right? It, the matte varnish will tone that down a little bit and then also continue to keep that same cohesive look throughout the entire finish because I'm adding the same top coat throughout. And for me, uh, it's one of those things I like to do when I'm using any kind of gilding paint is try to keep a consistent finish unless I'm really trying to make the gilding paint stand out amongst the rest of the finish. But for this one, I was not. I wanted to kind of go along with and not take away from the finish. So we went ahead and top coated it with the matte varnish. If it's your first time using our matte varnish or varnishes in general, it does dry really quick. So if you were trying to do it where you didn't have any brush strokes in it, you'd want to brush it on, flatten it out, feather it out, and then walk away and not do what I'm doing right here, which is continuously going over it. But because we're going to have those brush strokes textured look, you're not going to have to worry about it with this particular finish that we're working on today. And one of the reasons why I like to do finishes with brush strokes and a little bit of textured look to it because when you get to this part it's not as difficult to add the varnish because it's just simply brushing it on and playing with it a little bit and then walking away and you're done. I will do two coats of varnish regardless of what part of the piece it is. For the actual top of the sample piece that we did I stained the wood and I did, I think, four coats of varnish. And usually the tops of pieces when I'm varnishing, I'll do uh, three to five coats depending on, just because if it's a high traffic area, I wanna ensure it has just that little bit more protection than the rest of it. 
but for the most part, you're gonna get complete coverage as you can probably see really well here with one coat, uh, but I always recommend to do two coats just in case you missed a spot. In case there's a spot, you know, I've done it before where I, well, I was like, I, I have complete coverage, I'm just gonna leave it. And then I came back the next day and realized there was a whole area that I just happened to not brush over. So just as a rule of thumb, two coats is best to get complete coverage and for the, for the best protection of your painted finish. All right, so that's gonna be it. That's all there is to it. Really easy, just brushing it on any which way, and it actually is a part of this finish to add those little bit of brush strokes in. So you can see there towards the end when it was starting to dry, I gave a couple here and there. And you just do that to your liking. What I'll probably do is pull the camera down and do a little video so I can show you what it looks like wet. So you can kind of see exactly what I'm talking about. But this will flatten. The varnishes do self-level as well, so it's gonna flatten a little bit. This is what we have for this finish. Next, I'm gonna do the hardware, which has already been painted. I already have a video for that. I'm gonna put the hardware on, and then we're gonna do the final step, which is the waxing. We're gonna do the waxing all over, including on the hardware while it's on, so it can look like it was one with the piece. So that'll be next. All right, so we're on to our final step. And as you can see, we have the hardware on. I've painted it the gold dust as well, so it complements with the lining we did around the inside, just like what was on the actual piece that I painted this finish in. So the last step is gonna be black wax. So the big thing for me with black wax or any of the waxes is just to give it a little bit of accenting in those recessed areas and blend in and add to the overall finish. So I don't want this to start to look dark and dirty looking. I just want to give it a little bit of aging, a little bit, a little bit of antiquing to the finish. So that's what this step is going to be. With that being said, the inside, the recessed areas get aged while the hardware would have the same thing happen. So we're put the hardware on after we painted it and we're gonna actually wax the hardware along with the rest of the piece. So it looks like a one cohesively done antiqued piece, right? Because if you just antique this part and then put the hardware on nice, shiny, and new, it doesn't really look right. So put the hardware on, antique it with the piece as you're you know, waxing. So if there were, like a lot of detailed areas within this, I might do the waxing first on the hardware and then put it on and then antique wax or age it, or however you want to call it, in and around the areas that have spots where you would naturally see some aging, just like what we're doing down in the cracks and crevices for everywhere else. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tilt the camera down. I'm going to zoom in so you can really see up close what I'm about to do. I've actually changed my brush from a one and a half inch to a one and a half inch micro angle. So this is a flat, this is a micro angle. Micro angle is just a little thinner, has a point to it. It allows you to get a little bit better detailed areas. And for this, uh, just seemed like a better brush for me for this instance, but you have lots of options with our premium brushes. So you have one and a half inch flat and a one and a half inch micro angle depending on the area you're covering and what exactly you're doing with the wax. So, so next up is going to be waxing. We're gonna get this all waxed up and finish this off. All right, so we get you all zoomed in and we're going to work on our black wax. So one little tip, it comes with this little sealant piece that sometimes will pop out, it'll stay stuck to this. You wanna make sure that stays in there, that way it keeps your wax from drying out on you. So again, I have our hemp oil furniture wax in black. And what I decided to do, again, was switch out my brushes from the one inch to the one and a half, the one and a half inch flat, the one and a half inch micro angle. And it's just so I can have a little bit more detail with the point. It's gonna allow me to get down on those cracks and crevices a little bit more. And it's just a little flatter for me. Um, but ultimately, these are the brushes that I use for waxing and for cleaning, really don't have to clean them. Honestly, all I'll do is I'll wipe them as dry as possible and I'll throw them in a Ziploc bag and be good to go.
So for this step, we're going to be working on adding just an ever so slight accenting of black wax just to give it this piece a little bit of aging. But as you can see, I mean, it turned out really beautiful. I mean, you could, in theory, just leave this piece exactly as it is and go with it. But for the piece that I was working on at that time, I decided to add just a little bit of aging. I think over the nail heads really just gave it something, something a little extra. So for this wax, all we're gonna do, we're gonna dip our brush in here. We're gonna get a little bit out. All right, and we're just gonna get a little bit on our brush like that. And this might even be a little bit too much. So I might just take a little bit and wipe a little bit off because we're not, we're not trying to get it all over the place. We're just trying to do a nice accenting of the wax. So we wanna have a minimal amount on your brush and this wax will go a long way. You'd be surprised how far that little bit I put on there will probably cover this whole thing. I probably won't even have to dip again. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go right down into the, the cracks, crevices down in there. And it's your, it would be a little scary at first if you've never used wax before because you're covering up all your hard work that you did with this black and you're like, oh my gosh, you just ruined it, all right? But the one thing you need to know is the open time, the amount of time that you have for, before this dries is pretty long because it's hemp oil based. So you're gonna be able to brush it on, get it everywhere it needs to go and then come back to it and play with it a little bit with your shop towel to be able to wipe off and get it to look exactly how you want it to look. So we're going to brush this in and the big thing is just getting it in the areas you want, making sure you're hitting that area and your blue shop towel when you're wiping off, you can kind of use it as an application method as well and wipe it out or blend out to the areas that you want it to be on. So as you can see, I'm just really getting it down into those recessed areas jabbing it into the corners really good because any areas that get aged it's going to be those deep recessed corners you don't want to have the blue really standing out okay so i have my shop towel right so that's all i'm going to do i'm just do one little area at a time i'm going to come back i'm just going to wipe and i'm going to blend with my shop towel now i'm going to get the flat areas first because i want to wipe that up i really don't want those to get too much of the black wax I really want the black wax to stay down into those recessed areas. I'm gonna wipe that back, okay? So we got that, and you can even see it started to darken it, just a hair around the edge, which is perfect because it's gonna blend down into where it's gonna stay a little darker. Now we're gonna go down to the recessed areas, and I'm gonna flatten out my, my shot towel and go just across the, the raised areas and leave the darkened areas dark and not mess with it because I want it to show that age. And from whatever you did with the heavy metal gilding paint, if you did stippling or cross hatching, whatever kind of detailing you did, the wax is gonna sit down in there. And that's what I really like with this finish is it really gives the metal, the heavy metals gilding paint, an amazing aged look. So you have this really beautiful Grecian sky finish with this really cool aged metal interior or hardware or whatever areas you decide to add some metallic paint to. And I just felt like it added to the overall look to the finish. And this is all you're gonna do. So you're just gonna wipe it back and keeping a flat surface, you're gonna leave the, rate, the recessed areas dark and pull off of the raised areas. So now I'm gonna go and take my my shop towel and I'll wipe into that area that was a little bit of dark blue. And I'm just gonna kind of rub in there and I'll we'll blend that out. So it's not such a stark contrast. It doesn't go black to blue all of a sudden. It's like a blending effect that coming out from there is doing. And that's where I said you can use this as a tool to add wax where you don't want to add like big clumps of wax. You just want to have the blended look of the wax being added. So I'm pulling a little bit from down in that recessed area and pulling it out towards the blue. And then I'm just kind of rounding the edge with my shop towel. 
and blending and pulling. So we're gonna do this one last side, and then this will be it for the flat surface, and I'm gonna do the hardware with you guys real quick. Just like that. And then if you don't want to continue adding, you just flip it over, find another side, and you can kind of wipe this back and continue to blend. If you had too much of a hard line there, you could just kind of go find a clean spot and pull it back just a hair. All right, there we go. How cool is that? Hopefully you guys can see that really good. Okay, so now you have the hardware on and you want to add that same effect because you can see how this looks brand new and beautiful and then the metallic down there looks aged and doesn't match. It doesn't, it's not one cohesive look. So we're gonna take the same thing, dip our brush, and we're gonna jab in and around all those cracks and crevices and throughout the hardware, just jabbing in and around. And again, if you're new to waxing, you're probably freaking out. Like, I don't know if I wanna do that, I'm gonna ruin my piece. I promise, it'll, it'll, it'll turn out. Do one piece of hardware at a time because it does, doesn't dry fast, but you don't want to have it sitting while you did 15 of them. And then by the time you get back to the, the first of the 15, it's already starting to dry a little. You just do one at a time. Again, just jabbing your brush down into all the recessed areas because you're trying to make it look realistic. You're trying to make it look like an older piece of furniture with, with a little bit of aging to the hardware. So, okay, so we're going to get a clean spot. So pro tip, Fold your shop towel into eights so you can fold it back and get more shop towel without wasting shop towels. And we're just gonna wipe back. And this is where you just have to decide how much do you want left on the actual hardware itself. And you can see it just softened it up just a hair. And how much you wanna just leave down in those little, you know, recessed areas. And you're gonna wanna flip around your shop towel as much as you're going to need to to ensure you're not wiping it back onto the piece. I'm going to go back down into my painted area a little bit and then like right here we're going to blend it out so we're going to get a, a clean spot and just kind of pull it from the waxed area out and just kind of blend that in. That way it's, it looks natural. It doesn't look like this where it's just a hard line of black to so we're gonna get a spot where we have some, and we're gonna just pull it, pull it out that way. That way it looks natural. We don't wanna have a, just a black, like I took a black marker and went all the way around outside of the hardware. You definitely don't want that. Okay, so now we're gonna go all the way around outside, stick that shop towel in there a little bit and just kind of pull the wax away from that edge. Just a little bit. Just like that. All the way around. And then you can see there's some down in there. So we're just gonna stick our shop towel down in there a little bit. Kind of rub it around a little bit. We wanna leave some wax in there. So we're gonna use the part where it has wax on the shop towel. And then we're just going to kind of blend it out. And as you can see, instead of it looking like, you know, brand new hardware, it looks like it has some aging all throughout. I might tap a little on there like this and just kind of soften it, but not wipe it all the way back like this. So and then you just have to decide how much you want, how far you want to go with the waxing. And there you have it. I'm gonna have nicely aged hardware that's gonna match and be a part of the finish. And then of course you go around the outside, you know, so I would take and go along this edge like this because that is a recessed area. Just kind of rubbing my brush back and forth and take the flat edge and wipe this out. So the same kind of thing. You do that all the way around the outside, anywhere where you have those 
recessed areas where it would naturally become aged is the areas you want to hit with a wax. I'm hoping I'm seeing that good. I'm going to flip this around just so I can see a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. Let me get this side. Let me give you guys another angle at it too. All right, that's pretty cool. So there you have it. So that is the last step to my Grecian Sky Finish, which just gives it a little bit of aging and really gives that last little blended layered finish that finalizes everything. And there you have it, another how to paint furniture video using one of my finishes. This time it was Grecian Sky. In the future, we're gonna have many other full-on step-by-step tutorials to help everybody just get started. If you're brand new to furniture painting and you're not really sure, like where do I start to paint a whole piece of furniture? It's not just slapping on one coat sometimes. Sometimes it's layers of. And that's what I'm hoping these how to paint furniture videos are doing for you. It's inspiring you to give it a try. If you do want to give it a try, in the video description down below, I'll have all the supplies that I use for, the, for this finish and the link to find your local YSL retailer near you. If you do give it a try, be sure to tag me and let me know or you know, have any questions. If you're going through this process and you're just not sure, be sure to drop us a comment. If you're enjoying this content, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button on this video and share out to anyone else that you think might want to watch it as well. I hope everybody has a blessed day and as always, happy painting.